you get arrested, you go to jail. We make sure you're okay. Correct. We make sure your family's okay. Correct. Um, we pay for your lawyer. We like will we help you out? You that's don't right. say anything. Yeah. That's not what's happened. But that's not what happened. Like everybody forgets about that. Correct. Now it's just keep your mouth shut. Yep. Keep my mouth shut. My family loses their house. My kids end up on everybody yep. ends up on food stamps. You know, my wife's got no money. Yeah. I got no money in here. There's no support. And all you guys are and but th- then it becomes the threat of if you snitch, you'll get killed. Correct. But now you don't do that either. Yep. So now it's just, oh, oh, you're a rat. Oh, oh, he's a rat. Uh, like, where? Okay, great. Where's the? It's like for me cooperating. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I have anything to do with the mob or there's any kind of code. Yeah. Um, with with my whole thing, but it's been nothing but upside. <laughs> I mean, there's it was, to me, it's like that was the best decision out of a series of long bad decisions. This was the right best one, decision, man. Well, so so if you unpack that a little bit, right? The construct as is, right? right? So if you look at it and you're a criminal, right? Because you were a criminal. Um, and let's say you happen to be Italian-American or you happen to be an associate of an Italian-American crime family, it wouldn't make sense. You have a brotherhood, you have protection, you have a little swag, you have more resources, maybe money, capital, uh, maybe bigger heist, bigger stuff, bigger rackets. So that makes sense, right? So then your Italian guy get inducted should be, oh, wow, if I go away, yeah, there should be a mailbox every month, mailbox money, right? Right. Uh, in jail, oh, you, the first day you get there, hey, here's your shower slides, here's this, here's that. Oh, you're going to talk to this guy. I'm going to make sure the yard, you're protected. Oh, he's with us, right? That doesn't happen, right? So all this construct of like, if and when you get out, there should be, oh, wow, we kept your book going. Here's 500K because you served 10 years for the family. Right. None of this happens. Now, if you have a good captain, it does happen. Or maybe some God is like the Genovese family. I think they have a war chest for that. But a lot of these guys that manage a war chest, they mismanage it or they keep the money because they're greed. So what you sign up for, especially in the American mafia, which is different than the Italian mafia, which we'll talk about in a minute, if you will, um, it's it's they just they fucked it up. They were they had they were so powerful they were able to influence presidential campaigns. For when so when I interview current mobsters, I'm like, hey, do you have a local politician on the hook? No. Oh, did the Lucchese family have this guy as their M? No. Then what are you guys doing? All right. You, you know what's so funny about that is that if you ask me, did you have a local politician? You did. Well, I that's did. why I brought that you up. Know? Yeah, you like, did. I did have a local yeah. politician. I actually had several local politicians. Yeah, I actually donated to the mayoral campaign yep. to both sides. Yeah. I mean, we, we went to all the functions. Correct. Like I had accountants. I had doctors. I had lawyers. Yep. I had police officers. The police officer, one of several police officers I worked with, yeah. where I was doing fraudulent loans for them and getting them cash back. Right. Luckily, I was doing that because yeah. one of those guys is the guy that came to me yeah. and said, FBI is coming to arrest you. Yeah. To be honest with you, that really ultimately went bad. I should have yeah. just been arrested. I'd been better off. The point is, is that, is that, but if you talk to one of these these guys, like yeah. they don't have any of that. Correct. They're basically just shaking down people yeah. and running books and hoping not to get caught. And, and 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 because they so, so if you really think about it right so the American mafia kind of at one point had some utility right so for example you were in Bensonhurst Brooklyn Howard Beach Morris Park Bronx even Lisbon New Jersey right and God forbid your sister or daughter got like sexually assaulted right you go to the cops uh, this that well, they, they have to follow the law what First, can they you go really to do local wise guy that stuff to take care of right there would be like honor killings right. Or there'll be honor beatings. So this stuff was expedient. The mafia is much more expedient than the government. You know that. So the problem is the Italian-American neighborhoods basically dissipated. So now they no longer had like kind of that local strength. Because there's really no super Italian-American neighborhoods around anymore. If there are, they're not as mopped up. So then it's like they didn't really evolve. And the, because they didn't evolve and he had Rico and he had informants, that's why they are where they are today. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I forget who I talked to. Was They were saying that. John, or maybe it was a documentary where they were saying, like, listen, that the John Gotti, well, first of all, Rico destroyed the mob, right? But they, they also were saying that John Gotti did more damage to the mob yeah. than, than, than any, than the, the law enforcement ever did. I, I, actually, I actually disagree with that. I'm going to tell you why. Because don't get me wrong, you should not be on Time Magazine and you should not be talking to the media. But it's like a train, right? A train's going 100 miles an hour and you slam on the brakes. 
there's going to be inertia for a while before it stops. Right. There was two critical cases in the eight. It's actually three, but two to, to name real quick was the commission trial, which got rid of all the major bosses, right? And then the Windows trial, which took away one of the bigger rackets. So now you took away the leadership, you took away their money. The inertia behind that was like, well, Gotti came on board. He could have been the best boss on the planet. It just the wind. The, they just did not move quick enough, and they weren't dynamic enough to to move. It was literally a chess match with the FBI, and they lost. Right. Well, I mean, he had he had a couple. He had a good run. He had a couple of uh, mistrials. Well, he had, he had, he had, of, he had I think a good six seven year run at boss, which is just kind of expected. You're at right. six seven years. You're you're legit. Nowadays, it's different. You're quieter, and you could have a nice run. But back then, six seven runs. Paul Castellano. People try to make it look like. Paul Castellano was chose by uh, Castel, uh, by Carlo Gambino, and then Neil De La Croce, you know, was upset about it, and Gotti was upset about it. Castellano had a nice ten year run, but Castellano was taking the mafia in the right direction. They needed to go more yeah, was, towards legitimate business. Right, that's what I, I had I had heard just based on the limited knowledge yeah. I have that he was more business oriented than he Correct. was. You know, not that he was above having someone you know taken out yeah. or, or you know whatever, breaking someone's legs or anything, yeah. but he was very much more trying to legitimate, uh, legitimize their, the, the mob structure. Correct. So, um, but to talk, but talk about exit strategy and generational wealth. So we have a family friend who actually has a Ferrari dealership here in Tampa and one in Orlando. I think the Tampa is one of the largest in the country and one in Orlando, but he also fixes them in, in Elizabeth. So we're at his Christmas party, holiday party. And I see this guy come, and he's picking up a Ferrari, and he's on the phone. And like you, when you pick up any car, hey, you got to walk through. Here's this GPS, blah, blah. It's a Ferrari, so you yeah. have to be. He's like, hey, well, the guy's trying to show him what to do, and how, the guy's on the phone, right? Had, wants nothing other than just get the keys and leave, right? Right. I'll and figure it out. Yeah. yeah, and like he just didn't care. Right. He was like picking up a Honda. It was a relative cast line. I don't want to say which one, but a relative cast line. My point being is they had concrete companies that are still around to this day, chicken companies, meat companies. He set them up for like bigger things. Right. You know, like Cola Vita olive oil, that's Profaci. Right. So my point being is the guys that followed like kind of the business end of things and followed, had like an exit strategy and generational wealth. Tony, Fat Tony Salerno was worth like 600 million when he died. If there was a time that if you were an Italian American man, especially an Italian American criminal, it made sense. If you're a wise guy now and you don't really super juice, then you're probably making like sixty grand a year. Yeah, I was gonna say, and you're risking going to jail for ten or fifteen years. For what? It's, it's, uh, th that guy uh, I interviewed, uh, Jeff, right? Jeff Nadu, uh, yeah. Nadu, yeah. um, and it you know he he gave a a great story yeah. where he was talking about how um, there was a guy that got picked up that hung out with uh, Merlino. Yes. And they went to him and said, we want you to cooperate. And he said, no. And everybody else that got had the same charges were getting a year, 18 yeah. months. Yep. And he got like nine years. Yep. Because he, they knew he could give them Merlino. That's and he refused to. Yep. So, okay, we're going to hammer you. He was like, so, you know, Jeff was saying like, hanging out with these guys, they think it's cool. Correct. And they think, well, I'm not going to cooperate. Well, then you need to be expected to do 10 yep. years when you should be doing 18 months. Yeah, I, I interviewed an ex, well, he wasn't in the cartel, but he had cartel connections. And one of my always, one of my questions I always had was, the Italian mafia pretty much started the heroin trade in the U.S., right, back to the 60s. Okay. In my opinion, that's why they had Appalachian meeting in 57, because there was a meeting in Sicily. They said, we're going to go ahead and control the national pipeline up until the 80s during the Pete's Connection trial. That was another important trial. So when Coke got big, why wouldn't the Colombians just go to the Italians and say, hey, you have 26 cities, you have distribution. Why don't, you, why don't we, we'll get it to New York, we'll get it to LA, we'll get it to Chicago. You guys dis distribute it. Cartel guys wanted nothing to do with Italian mafia because he increased FBI presence. Right. So that's why they went to other ethnic groups in themselves. They distribute themselves essentially now, or other ethnic groups wanted nothing to do with the Italians. Um, you know, which was a big opportunity. I, I'm not. I don't condone drugs. Drugs have personally devastated my family's life. But from a business perspective, I think the Italian mafia uh, lost out because they did not get involved with drugs. The Indragada, which is in Calabria, they got involved with coke early, and now they make fifty billion dollars a year. So, do you know who Seth Ferrante is? Of course, I okay. interviewed him. Oh, I was just going to say yeah. you should interview him. He did. Yeah. He did a. Was it dope? I think it was the documentary. Is it Dope Man? Uh, what's his did. name? Uh, 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 White Boy Rick? 
Yeah, yeah, but you know? no, he he. I mean, he did that, but he also did. He oh, just, he did. He, did he just did a recent one. Yeah, he did Dope Man. I think it was about how the Italians were the original Dope Man. Yeah, something. yeah, where yeah. he was saying like they, you know, they they pushed that they weren't, Correct. but they were. Correct. Like all these guys have been arrested for, yeah, little here, little there. Um, so we were talking earlier about, well, before the podcast, we were talking about how the. So at one point, you know, the Italian mob, yeah. the mob in, you know, Canada, yes. the mob in the US, like they were basically all kind of on, on par, par with Correct. one another. Correct. And then, you know, like to me, I give this to the, you know, to the FBI, right? Yeah. And to Rico and yeah. to how they pursued them, you know, insistently. Yep. Uh, and they've, and I was like, uh, you know, like it's, it's dead. Like it's over. It's, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, um, a, but, a boutique um, street gang at this point, you know, uh, you know, it's flashy, it's nice, it yeah. looks good. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, everybody knows about it kind of, you yep. know, they, it's got a, it's kind of got a sexy appeal to it. To yeah. Some, some people, um, you know, but it's not the mob. It's not, Correct. it's not even a fraction of what it Correct. once was. Correct. And so, but you could, and, and you, one, I, I was saying, you know, you know that because yeah. They're all on YouTube. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, I'm even guys that people say, no, he's still, you know, even Merlino, people, everybody out there. Now, Merlino's not saying it, yeah. but of course not. But guys are still out there saying, no, he's still running, you know, the Philadelphia mob and he's on YouTube. So, you know, and then you've got guys that are saying, I'm out of that life, or some of them cooperated, some yeah. didn't cooperate. You know, some guys, maybe they just kind of retired and yeah. they started a YouTube channel. I, and I get that. But the fact is, whether you're in or out of it, those mobsters in Canada would never be on YouTube. Hell no. You know, not only I mean, they would they would come in, they they kill you. Yeah. You'd be lucky if your family didn't get killed just to put, send a message to everybody. They recently killed a woman in Canada, and they're not sure if she was collateral damage or if she's involved herself. But yeah, Canadian mafia doesn't doesn't mess 